Good evening, everyone. This is Tracy King, also known as the Bulletin Board Lady. Um, you found me here on Facebook, but you can also find me on Instagram as the Bulletin Board Lady and on Twitter as Tracy King. Um, today is normally Workstation Wednesday, where I talk about different ways to incorporate workstations into your classroom, um, different kinds of workstations that um, I'm using or that I'd like to use or that I just made and I can't wait to use. But um, things are a little bit crazy right now. And so tonight, instead of talking about workstations, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about working from home. Um, I have to preface this with um, the statement that I just feel like I don't um, have a good grasp on this right now. And I know there are lots of other music teachers that feel the same way. Lots of regular classroom teachers that feel the same way. Um, right now, my district, we have been out of school for a week. Um, we sent packets home with students, so I sent them some websites that they could use. For me, I'm not taking a grade on any of that work. Um, I don't know what the rest of the school year will um, bring about because we, we just don't have any answers and the district's being kind of quiet about it right now, probably thoughtfully trying to decide what we do next. So um, I've shared a blog post um, at mrskingrocks.blogspot.com with some ideas um, for things that you might be able to use for distance learning. Um, there are lots of other music teachers just in the spirit of sharing that are really posting some amazing things. I would recommend Eileen Miracle's blog, um, David Rao is doing a lot of awesome work too, there's a special website set up. There are several Facebook groups that I think would be really helpful to you. Um, E-learning, e-music education, um, there's um, music teaching creating online content, which I think we have all of these things, but you can message me and I'll try to get you links to them if you What, how my school is set up right now is um, that we we send home the packets and we're going to reevaluate where we are and then we'll make a plan. Um, I'm assuming that we're going to be out much longer than April 6th just from how things are gearing up. So we'll have to see um, just how that goes. And then, you know, I may be able to speak to you more positively about what I'm doing and how it's working. But right now, I'd like to know if there's something that you need that I can help you with. Is there um, some need in your distance planning that you need? Maybe you need a rhythm activity or you need a worksheet that students can type into PDF form or through Google Classroom or something like that. Maybe you just need ideas. Um, in the next few days, I'm going to be creating some videos and I'll post them here on Facebook and um, on YouTube so that you're able to share those with students. Some of those will be using um, some rhythm activities, um, maybe later a few pitch activities as well. Right now I can't get back into my classroom, so I'm kind of limited to what I have at home here. So please let me know if there's something that I can create for you, something that I can, maybe a tutorial. Would you like to see how I set up my Google Classrooms and how I send an assignment or I add a material or something like that? So I don't want you to be afraid to ask. I may not have the answer, but perhaps I can find someone that has an answer if if I'm not able to help you myself. So you're not in this alone. We are all in this together. We're all scrambling, trying to figure stuff out. And that's okay, because we are amazing. And we're going to figure this out. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that I have right now in my store that you can use. You have my permission to use these within a secured environment. That means like um, whatever the micro the Microsoft class, um, is it one class or whatever the Microsoft one version of Google Classroom is. You can use it there. You can use it in Google Classroom, Class Dojo, um, Seesaw. As long as the environment has um, password protected, you can use that. The videos that I'll be posting on YouTube, you may use in any manner. You can post those on your social media or directly on your school website. 
right? They don't have to be secured. But the files that I'm working with tonight and I'm talking about, for the most part, need to be in that kind of environment. So let me talk to you first about, I'm going to turn this around so you don't see me and you see my computer. So um, I have a freebie on my in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. I also um, link to that in my blog that uses Incredibox. And if you've never used Incredibox, oh my gosh, you just might lose chunks of your um, life to this. So what it does is it allows students to mix music using different kinds of loops. So when you get there, the web version is free. And the app is a buck or two or something like that. But web version is free. So I'm going to click. Now, these are like families of sounds. They're not really genres. So it's not like country, rock, classical. But they're kind of groups of sound, families of sounds. I'm going to click on the love. And it's going to load at the bottom until I get a play sign. There we go. And they're not naked. I know they look like they're naked. And I know, look, yeah, da, 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 little nipple action. But what I tell my students is that they're just in their swimming trunks. And that seems to satisfy them, even like the crazy jokesters that want to make nipple jokes. You know, soon enough that's done because we're dressing them and they're so enthralled with the app itself. So what you do is you choose from these icons down below. Now, in this set, they are kind of color coded. In other sets, they use symbols and other ways to group them. So I'm going to drag one up and drop it. This works the same on an iPhone or tablet or anything. You just drag and drop. You get a couple more in there. And students find this um, very intuitive. It's super easy for them to just drop loops and they're amazed at how cool it sounds. And so you can silence them by just touching them and leaving them in there. Perhaps you throw one in that you don't love. So we'll say this purple guy I'm not going to love. So he loads at the bottom. You can see he's going in there. And I'm like, oh, not the vibe I'm going for. So I just swipe him and he's back to a swimsuit guy. And so you can mix all sorts. Lots of them have words with them. Each family of sounds is kind of a different vibe. And then students can choose to record. Maybe I should turn that down just a little bit. Oh, wrong way. Sorry. Turn that down just a little bit. Um, students can record and then they can send you their mixes via email. So it's not actually, they don't have to put in their own email. Um, they just have to put in yours and it sends this mix that they've created to you. Um, in the assignment that I have linked that's for free, um, I give you like six or seven different movie scenes and students are asked to choose one of the scenes and then create a mix that could be playing in the background as this is going on uh, or as the scene is going on. So and there are pretty different um, moods and different scenes that are going on so students can choose to be really, really creative. And then they can just email that directly to you and you can take a listen. So that's one of the ideas that I'm sharing. The next is I have some Google Slides um, paperless activities and I've been using off and on this school year. And I just want to run through and show you some of the ways you might be able to do activities in um, Google Slides with, within your Google Classroom or your other um, digital environment. Um, these are in no way like the best of the best or anything like that, but I'm hoping that they'll inspire you. If you want to make your own, please use these as ideas as a springboard to jump off of. If you want to use the ones that I've already created, they're just a couple of bucks and I've linked to it in the resources link that's um, up above this video. So let's take a look at some of the things that you can do within Google Slides. So this is the music themed writing prompts. For this one, I went ahead and have them all open. When they're in your Google Drive, they'll look like this. And then I just went ahead and got them open because my internet be, may be a little crazy tonight. And there are all different kinds of writing prompts here. And this one says, 
I'm not sure if you can see it all, but I'll read it to you. A local businessman is offered to buy an instrument for any student at your school that will write him a letter asking for one. In the space below, write a letter to Mr. Jagger and request an instrument. Explain why you would like it and be sure to thank him. So then the students just click in this text box and they delete the text that's there and then they can just type in, you know, whatever their letter would be, dear Mr. Jagger, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then they can send that to you. So in Google Classroom, I would um, add this one page, I would add as an assignment. And then um, one of the options that you'll get is that you could make a copy for each student. So when each student goes there, it generates a copy for them. And when they're finished, they click turn in assignment and it'll come back to you where you can review it. So that's how, how I send them and I get them back to take a look at them. All right, the next one is an inst... Oh, and I should mention that this is done in edit mode. So it's not in presentation mode, it's just in edit mode so that students can click and edit and change the slide. Okay, so the next one I think I've talked about before, this is instrument families. There are a bunch of different activities here that you can do having students sort instruments. I don't send this whole file to them. I just send um, a couple of slides that I want them to work on. So I might send these four um, sorting slides here where they have to label the instruments. And all they do, is, again, leaving it in edit mode, is click on the box and drag it down and drop it on the instrument. So they just do this. When they're finished, then um, they would click turn in assignment and it would come back to you. And um, this works um, wherever, for me, it's Google Classroom, but it works on iPad or it works on a PC. So I found that that works good. Another um, idea for using um, these slides is a rhythm syllable match. And I guess we could do one more springy. So in this activity, students look at the words at the bottom and they think, how many syllables are here? How would I clap this? So the first one is rose, rose. So that would be one syllable. They would drag it up and drop it under here. How about tulip, tulip? That's two. Oh, that's like TT. So they would grab the box and drag it up where it goes. So um, in these activities, it's really more of um, deciphering the syllables in the word and deciding which rhythm pattern do they go um, under. And some of them are a little more complex. Some of them use 16th notes. Um, basically, I use these third, fourth, and fifth grade. So um, they're different for different holidays. There are several just generic ones that, that you can use like there's the soup one and the football one and um, things like that and they're pretty short activities something that I think it's important that's important when we're planning these activities at home is not necessarily giving them you know see I see my students for 50 minutes a week I don't think that I need to send them 50 minutes of music work per week and here's why um, just with working with my eight-year-old this week, some things that may take a little longer in class or maybe even a little less in class, um, I'm finding that I'm approaching it in a different way. And she doesn't have um, big assignments from five or six different teachers, but it still feels like it takes longer at home than it would at school. And I would feel burdened if she had to do 50 minutes worth of music work and artwork and computer work and so on in addition to um, the reading and math work. And her teachers are not overloading her. Um, the assignments that she gets from her classroom teacher are easily done um, in 30 minutes to an hour um, or less. And I don't really want to add too much more to that. So adding 15 or 20 minutes worth of musical activities or something from the other special areas or the arts I think is good and it keeps them learning. Um, but I don't think you need to be concerned about sending a huge big packet of work every single week when we see our students once a week. Now if you teach middle school and you see them every day or choir or band, um, I'm sure that your options have to be different than what mine are. But I don't think we 
we need to overwhelm them with work to make sure that they're still being musical in some way and that we're still able to assess them. So off the soapbox, let's take a look at something else. So this was still the rhythm syllables one. And then I have um, the newest one that I have out is for body percussion. And this one actually requests that you go into present mode. So to do that, I'm going to go up to view and then present. And that just opens it up like a regular slideshow. And then students can use the down arrows or they can click and it'll move to the next slide. So this leads them to um, practicing their body percussion. We go through snapping and clapping and patting and stomping. And then just like the body percussion um, sets that I have out that are in PDF form, they're going to perform in um, these slideshows. So they would go through and clap clap, 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 snap, 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 and so on. And the patterns do get a little more difficult. And we add the quarter rest, and we add two sounds on the beat, which of course is barred eighth notes or TTs in my classroom. And so they would go through and they would practice um, this slide, I think there's like, I don't know, 12 or 13 slides, 15 slides in this set. Then for their, I would add this file in materials because it's not something they have to turn back into me. And then um, I would assign the body percussion composition um, as an assignment that I do, do want them to turn in. So this tells them how to copy and paste because that's not always a given that they'll know how to do that. And then what they do is they copy and paste these icons. So from over here, I'm going to do copy and I'm on a Mac, so I'm using that command key. And then I would just, you know, control copy all of these and just drag them into the boxes to create something awesome. Um, and then the next one is the same idea as that, except I've set up so that there can be two sounds on the beat. And I've also given them a composition to follow. So this is TT. So which one of these icons would work there? So let's co copy and paste a TT there and so on. And so students would just fill in um, those boxes with TAS or TTs that relate to the body percussion. And then they have a whole piece that they can perform. So all of these Google Slide activities are available in um, one bundle. It's called Google Slides Paperless Bundle or something in my store. I've linked that also up there. And um, you don't need to send all of it. You can just send one slide at a time or maybe a couple slides at a time. Um, I know this doesn't completely solve um, our distance learning problems, but I hope that it gives you at least a couple of ideas of things that you might be able to do that would be age appropriate for your students and would be measurable or accessible if your district is requiring you to do that right now. So look out in the next few days for some videos that you can use in your classroom. And please, 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 whether you comment here on the post or you message me privately, please let me know if there's anything that I can do to help you as we kind of wait this virus out. All right. Best wishes. I'll see you again soon.